Hi, Soul Tribe. Trina Phoenix here, and so glad you're here with me today. So we're getting ready for the Lion's Gate, and wow, there's a lot going on right now. So I just got home from work, but this has been on my mind, and I thought that I would share with you guys and read a little bit of the the awesome alchemy book and talk about that and what's going on with that. And again, this is St. Germain on alchemy for Annie and all who would like to order it. So, oneness of life and the four lower bodies. So I keep like getting so much information about it's time to connect all of your chakras. It's time to connect all of the planetary awareness that you have inside of your being. Um, it's kind of like um, they're key codes to help you have memories of certain parts of yourself that you forgot through these energy wheels. These basically angels. These are these are beings uh, that you're connected to through this grid system. So within within your energy centers of your body, you have access to basically the seven original gods. And I'm pretty sure this is um, where where. So with this physical body that we have at this point in time, it's it's been through a lot of changes. But um, the one we have now in 2020 here on Earth, third dimension, is um, a combination of uh, seven races and genetic codes. And I'm pretty sure this is what the seven sisters um, have been trying to explain to me and then it's confusing because you know there's 12 disciples 12 cranial nerves 12 ganglia and then and then then i just saw that the five hidden again i keep getting this information about we understand seven but we do not understand the hidden five so there's a hidden five connection points planetary bodies uh gods that we're connected to that we don't really i don't think we have an awareness of them so, um, one of them is Vulcan. Um, one of them might be uh, what they would call um, Wormwood in the Bible, which is going to be uh, Remedy, Medicine. Might be associated to Healer. Um, so, I'm trying to figure that part out, but I know that there's five hidden bodies in in us that are all connecting and it, it's so funny because i keep seeing the system and these are the it, it goes to 13 so we're reconnecting the full 13. so i keep seeing this and like i said it's not the same as what other people are kind of getting it's a little bit different that's why it's really throwing me off but what i'm seeing is a 13 energy center uh sphere of light that we operate within so imagine a sphere of light, like kind of like an egg, and we are operating within this egg, and the egg is a, is a, is a microcosmic reflection of the macrocosm solar construct that we're existing in, in this solar system. So it's like a cell in a body, in essence. It's the micro and the macro. So within your, 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 your sphere of creation, which is your auric field, in, in your third dimensional body, within your seven chakras, you have, the, you know, the, the first one being the root in its red, and then the second is orange, third is solar, fourth is, is earth, heart, green, and then you have throat, third eye, and then you have the crown chakra, and then above the crown chakra, I see the soul star. It's a template for your soul's template. It's uh, where the casual body and the and, and the, the the incarnation energy soul cord of this are connected. And then I also see that there's another a crystalline, literally a moving star above that which is like, um, the best way I can describe it is like the Sims characters on that game, the Sims. Literally, when I saw that, the little crystals over their heads, I'm like, oh my God, that's us. I literally, 
that's it, that's a great representation of what I see, kind of like a Sims character. So so above the eighth, which is the soul star, that you have the the um. Because what I see is it it goes bottom is one, then two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then I see the one above that is eight, and then I see then it goes back down again. And that's the ninth, and the ninth is, is another soul star, but this one's inside the earth, about 12 to 8 inches is what I see. It's kind of like, um, it's like you're anchoring, it's the anchoring of your point of perception, it's the anchoring of your consciousness as a, as a conscious being. So, like you're, it's like you're connected. I don't know how to explain it, to the matrix, to the grid, you're literally connected. So I see the bottom one as being more magnetic. And then the top one is being more, it's receiving, it's receiving templates. It's more lunar based. The bottom one is so, is going to be the sun. So then I also see your hands. These are also another positive negative charge on the wheel. So because in this position, you are a star. I literally see the body as a star. So, and then, so the hands is 10 and 11, 11 being the left, 10 being the right. And then I see 12 as, like I said, 12 was the soul eagle te ego template, which is the moon base. And then the 13 is where I see like that, that really soul crystal Sims crystal thing above us. And that's the God awareness. And that connects you to creation. Like it's the, um, I think the silver cord is actually coming from, um, that eighth. I mean the 12th. We'll actually see the twelfth going into the eighth. So the 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 soul, the the ego template, the akashic record, and the kaj part of the causal body. I see that as anchored in that twelfth chakra through the auric field. So it's kind of hard. Like I see um, within the egg, you have the seven chakras, and then you've got your hands, and then you've got the one above your head and the one beneath your feet. But then you have another one above your head, which is what is actually holding your auric field in a sphere through that ninth. So through the bottom, the ninth down here, and then you see up here, this is what's connecting the auric field. And all the seven are going in between. So then, and then the thirteenth is, is like... It's, it's not even uh, in this dimension. It's above. This might be in Sirius, and this might be why Sirius A is so bright, but this might be where we're projecting our star's essence in the holographic reality. So I keep seeing that the eye is coming from the Syrian position, and this is, this is also connected to the third eye or the crown and chakra. Both of those are going to be connected to this 12th and this 13th and the 9th. They, they're all that trinity is is what's keeping you in this plane because once you drop the once the ninth disconnects and the twelfth uh, the eighth disconnects you go straight up into the twelfth and the thirteenth and those are going to be where you're going to have your causal body and you're going to have above that you're going to have your your higher bodies in the thirteenth but once you go to the twelfth you're still going to be stuck into the causal energy bodies of this dimension so you need to get to the thirteenth which is which is where you reconnect to your literal god awareness so i see the twelfth chakra it's like where the silver cord comes from comes out of us and this is the ergos the soul template the thirteenth is the representation of the full creative egg that you're in and it is directly connected to the web or the womb or the body of the cosmic body and that is where you are in your own individual sphere of God, sphere of your auric bubble but you understand that you are one with consciousness and you were one with all of creation and that's the oneness part of you that you get connected back to the cosmic conscious awareness. And this is where you are fully aware of your meta and your multidimensional awareness. So these, see, I see as these are eggs of creation, and we're in an egg of creation. And this egg of creation is, um, it's a micro of your macro. So it's like, it's like a part of you that's coming down into this reality. And this reality, obviously, is a projection, a holographic 
projection, which would which would mean it's like a dream. So, and we, we as creators are so powerful that we're creating actual physical bodies in an actual physical dimension. So, within your power to create, you created your body and you're operating your body now from a higher dimension in a remote location and it's actually driving and, and, and operating your avatar or your physical body. So, within this egg of creation that I see on the cosmic, I also see it as, the, as a micro. So, it's like there's cells. Like, it, it, a cell has a full solar system within it. And within you is a full solar system. And that solar system is attached to the body of its solar logos. So, this is how I'm seeing that these connections go through. And I, I'm seeing such a strong connection to, we need to understand that we are literally looking at, we are from... The, you know, from, from the Syrian, Draconian, Pleiadian creation point. And, and it looks like everything keeps going back to this, even from the pyramids in Egypt. And, and this week with this lion's gate, this is, about, it, this is about Egypt. So this energy activation is being focused in Egypt. Australia was focused on um, a couple weeks ago. Um, guys, send some... positive energy to Australia um, trying to figure out the appropriate energy I keep hearing inspiration inspiration great reveal revealing revealing uh, the people there have got to come into some kind of a unity to stop the craziness that's going on because what's going on over there is it's really not good over there so pray for our brothers and sisters that are in Australia currently because they're having a hard time with this lockdown and it's pretty pretty serious I guess so much love to you, Australia. Um, may her heart inspire the people to come together and love and, 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 and find a way through this. I know that you can, and this is what we need to anchor at this point in time with this lion's gate. That's why I'm doing this. There's something about this time and this gate and this window that's very important for us to connect in whatever way you can and bring in the energies of the ancestors from our galactic realms and the closest ones to us right now are the Orion, Pleiadian, Sirius constellations of our direct system. So, and understand this is with, within our system. This isn't the highest that we can go, but this is going to be directly connecting to higher vibrations of the solar system that we're currently operating in. So it's, it's like building a bridge. Does that make sense? It's literally building a bridge. So I'm also getting information about pay attention to the cat's eye nebula. There's nine planets within it. Obvious, and it says that this cat's eye nebula that is near or in the Orion constellation literally is where they're saying where the, the northern point, the central point of this solar system is truly located. And within that cat's eye nebula, there is no time because there's no spin because it's the central point. So it doesn't move. Everything else around it is moving except for the cat's eye nebula in the Orion. And it's interesting. Um, there's just so much that we don't know. So I, there are nine, nine planets. Nine is completion. Nine is our number system. Zero through nine. Mm, my puppies. Hey, you two. So uh, there's something to this, the cat's eye. I keep seeing this. Pay attention to the cat's eye. And the cat's eye, too, references... Think about it. The cat's eye was always known for protection. Um, and they say when the fallen angels over were overtaking the earth and the giants were eating everything, they say that they called forth Sekhmet, which is the cat-faced goddess in Egypt spoken about. And apparently she came from Venus, and she was the one, the only one who had the power that could actually defeat what was going on on the earth to try to save some of the humans because they were just all being eaten. So, and they say she may have been re re uh, responsible for one of the deluge. So, um, these are very powerful beings and very powerful uh, parts of our ancestry. So, I'm pretty certain that we are very connected to these these beings and um, we need to start to understand that this this is our family. This is literally our family. 
And this is why the Native Americans have always known about the importance of connecting with our ancestral lines and the power of our ancestry, because this truly is uh, your greatest gift because through your bloodline, you can actually bring in the wisdom and the knowledge of your ancestors and you can actually um, integrate with their gifts and their talents and also integrate with the ones that you mastered in those past timelines. So, cause this is all still within your causal body. It's all there, it's all recorded. Everything you've ever experienced is still held within that body. So when we look at the oneness of life in the four lower bodies, now it must be understood with cherishment that all life is one and that an abuse of power on the part of any member of the world body has its effect upon us all. But by a like token, the correct use of power by anyone upon this planet brings blessings to all. Power is energy. Energy stored in the physical body can be measured as the sum total of the energy content of all the body cells. When this energy is spent, it becomes necessary to, in some way, reinfuse the cells with the energy in order to renew the power of the body. To infuse the body cells with new and vital energy when those cells are already clogged with accumulations of negatively qualified substances, residues and deposits of power misused through wrong thought and feeling is to particularly to is to partially negate the flow of energy in the body. This can cause fatigue, loss of power, which if unchecked eventually results in so-called death. The, cessa the cessation of the flow of power from the presence of the physical form. Consider the value of fleshing out these accumulations by spiritual electronics and the gradually building up of light in the four lower bodies. By the fourfold alchemy of the Maltese cross and the science of the spoken word. Thus it is most necessary to understand the relationship of the four lower bodies as you pursue the rebuilding of the temple of man as a wise master builder. The mental body interpenetrates the physical body as water interpenetrates a sponge. Having its own reservoir of power, it does not depend upon the physical body except as the focal point for the flow and distribution of that power. Yet, the four lower bodies of man are so interrelated that if the mental body is to operate at optimum efficiency, the other three must be in perfect alignment with it and with each other. All three must agree. The densities that the mental body encounters in the physical body, such as the harmful residue of nicotine, drugs, impure, impure food, or even substances of fear, doubt, and mental rebellion accumulated from past or present lifetimes, clog the brain cells and imprison the light of the atom, effectively impeding the free flow of light to the physical consciousness and thereby impairing the function of the mental faculties. When misused, the power of the emotional body becomes the most violent and volatile of all the four lower bodies. When agitated by undisciplined feelings, these emotional energies have a tendency to lead men astray in their thinking and in their actions. The flow of power to the mental body is also greatly subject to the power of the etheric or mental or memory body. In memory's storehouse, the writings of all past actions in present and previous embodiments as an electronical record of considerable weight and influence. The power of this record, together with the momentums 
generated by the misuse of energy is a subtle pressure that affects the present moment for good or for ill. Relatively speaking, unless it is brought under the control of the balancing power of the great God flame within your heart, the immortal flame of power, wisdom, and love. The Maltese cross, the symbol of God-controlled power. The Maltese cross, the symbol of perfect balance of the God flame, as in heaven, so on earth, provides a thought and energy matrix whereby the ill effects of personal and planetary karma can be brought under control and the power of virtue released in its place, that mankind's use of power might no longer corrupt life on earth. <laughs> it has been said that the power tends to corrupt and the absolute power corrupts absolutely. Power can be used as the bow of the infinite archer to release an arrow of perfection into the heart of man's goal of happiness. As the pursuit of happiness is an acknowledged treasure, let all who would permanently enjoy it ponder the Maltese cross as a simple thought form through which the great truths may be revealed for the blessing of all. Looking at the Maltese cross placed upright before us, we can see the four symmetrical arms extending from the center that are triangular in shape, wide at the outside, giving the appearance of a fanning or a funneling action. And this is the Maltese cross. The Maltese cross, a symbol, oh, I already, I already went that way. Okay. Okay. Mm -mm. Sorry, I lost my place. Okay. It has been said that power tends to corrupt. We already went that. The pursuit of happiness and knowledge. Is. Okay. I do another Maltese cross. It's a simple enough form of truth. Sorry, guys. I totally lost my place. Revealed for blessings of all. Okay. Looking at the Maltese cross placed up before us, we see the four symmetrical arms. The upper or the north arm descending into the center resembles the upper vessel of the hourglass. Actually, it is a funnel through which the great energies of God, the power of God, are descending into the cup or the chalice or the holy grail of your being. The wide opening reminds us of the infinite energies of source. And that's the top, the white, is what we're speaking of. The upper north arm and God's ability to convey these to men. Therefore, we know that we need not accept limitation in any form, whether in receiving or giving the limitless light of the cosmos. The point of qualification at the center of the cross indicates that you must always consciously determine within your heart and mind to qualify your God-given energy with the purity of the divine intent and with the virtues of your Christ identity. You need not be weak or weakened with the, com with the confronted when, whether, oh, sorry, when confronted <laughs> by waves of discordant energy, whether you, whether your own or another's, nor is it necessary for you to be rude in your rebuttal of human error, for it is not the person, but the impersonal energy personally misdirected that must be challenged. Okay, so you must always consciously determine within your heart or mind to qualify your God-given energy with the purity of the divine intent and with the virtues of your Christ identity. You need not be weak or weakened when confronted by waves of discordant energy, whether your own or another's. 
nor is it necessary for you to be rude or rebutal of a human error, for it is not the person, but it is the impersonal energy personally misdirected that must be challenged. So, this is the picture that they draw in the book of the Maltese cross and some of its actions. And it's interesting because I'm seeing a little bit more to this and how it is in relation to the four power bodies of the ener energy systems within our body. And I see that as being the crown, the root, and then your hands. And they connect in the forehead through the, it's like, it's, just, it's literally a star and it, this is a good representation of it too. But I see this star as sideways inside of us. So I see this Maltese cross literally inside you this way. And there's lots of them and they spin all different directions. So I see them as wheels inside. And I literally see them this way. So I can, I mean, and the chakra wheels, they move different ways. But when I look at this, this to me, I've seen this in the blood. So I've, I see this symbol in the blood. So to me, because um, you literally, this I've seen this literally in the blood. So this is like a little, um, kind of like an ATP factory would be the best way to explain it. An ATP factory. This is what would give power to your cells. It's literally, um, it's, it's, it's firing it up. And you can discharge energy and you can also bring it back in through this, these little, these little funnels, these little chalices. They literally bring spirals of energy into them. Ooh, they draw them right in. And some of them are shooting out too. So I, it, yeah, I, and I see that thing spinning. So, and it's, it's in the blood and it's also above us in the cosmos. So therefore, establish yourself in a firm, unyielding consciousness that rejects evil as the lie of man's misqualification. And as you breathe in the essence of the sacred fire, flower of power, determine to strip the lie of its negative power manifesting as thrones of abuse. It must be recognized that when the energy ascension descends from God into man through the upper arm, narrowing through the funnel to flow into the crucible of the being at the point of the cross. It passes through the nexus and it fans out into the three lower triangles to manifest as power, wisdom, and love in the world of material form. Thus, the infinite energies of God are molded by the qualifications of man's attention, focused at the heart of the cross, the seat of his conscious mind, by the means power con the, by the by this means, power congeals in the physical world, taking the form of the thoughts, the feelings, the acts, and the spoken word of man. The release of its potential being entirely dependent upon the motivation and the will of your consciousness. The balance between the upper arm, which receives the energies of spirit, and the three lower arms, through which spirit's energies coalesce both in and as matter, provides for the balanced manifestation of God's power as above, so below, from the planes of the primary causation to the physical effects of it, as it is taught in the hermetic science. If man's qualification of his quotient of spiritual energy released over the crystal cord, that's the star the highest star I see, the 13th star chakra in our body. From the I am presence to the heart chakra were retained in purity from the moment it entered the crucible of its consciousness. All that is in manifestation in the microcosm would reflect the perfection of the macrocosm. Think of that. That's profound. We will read that one more time. 
if man's qualification of his quotient of spiritual energy released over the crystal cord from the I am presence to the heart chakra were retained in purity from the moment that it entered into the body, the crucible of its consciousness, all that is in manifestation in the microcosm would reflect the perfection of the macrocosm. Think of that. This is how we bring heaven to earth. We reconnect with our original ancestral templates and our soul and our memories of what we were and what we are. And we start to anchor those energies into this dimension. And we do that through our consciousness and our mind and our causal bodies, which is above the energy bodies. We must bring them together. It's time. Okay, the energies of the three lower arms fanning out in a balanced action from the center of the Maltese cross proceed then from the plane of pure being into form or action phase of the threefold flame. Power by itself in the left arm retains the negative polarity unless and until it is qualified with the positive polarity of divine love in the right arm. Ponder well this statement. Now, the left arm of the cross denotes the negative or the minus charge of the spiritual energy qualified by the blue flame of power. The right arm denotes the positive or the plus charge qualified by the pink flame of love. And the lower arm denoting the central axis of the plus and minus fling is qualified by the golden flame of illumination which imbues both the positive and negative poles with wisdom's God direction and purpose. Therefore, all that is below in the microcosm is intended to be a threefold manifestation of the sacred fire that descends from above in the macrocosm. The energy released from the Godhead the day star from on high, the idle stone of power or the mighty I am presence scintillating in the octaves of perfection immediately upon entering the lower octaves of matter assumes the negative pole of being in what is called the night side of manifestation. This is the minus side of life. This is the dream this is the sleep. We are in the world of the night, and that is why in the world of the night, in the absence of light, your body now casts its shadow. So, spirit enters into the material qualification. The energies garnered in spirit when preceded by the right thought in the left arm, gain the, imp the impetus for God virtue by the power of love's cohesion and attraction as they are released into action through the right arm. The left-right push-pull action can be illustrated through the principle of the slingshot, wherein the stone in the sling is, with the, with, is withdrawn from the Y in the negative pull. Wow, the Y in the negative pull. Why? The introduction of negativity into our creation. Wow. Why in a negative pull in order to see, in order to secure the necessary impetus of power to drive home the shot through the positive release. The push and pull. The polarity. The duality. Whoa! So, so.